doesn't want to hate traffic, but some cities have real reason to complain, according to the Inlet's ninth annual traffic and storm crime report. Joining us today to tell us more about the state of traffic in the U.S. is Chris Hanley, VP of Product Management and Analytics of Inlet. And Chris, as I said, everyone hates traffic in the morning, um, but some cities really have it bad. Um, what did the study find in terms of the state of traffic in the U.S.? So our study collects data from 250 million different vehicles on the road, and we use that to create an accurate real-time traffic model. We put that together and analyze it over the course of the year, and this year we found that commuters have spent over 8 billion hours stuck in traffic across the U.S. The top city in that ranking is Los Angeles. It comes in at 81 hours a year lost in traffic. D.C., San Francisco, they're number two and number three at 75 hours a year lost in traffic. Well, living in the D.C. area, I know what it means. Now, what are some of the economic factors that are causing traffic to be so bad? There are two primary economic factors that are driving this growth. The first is GDP. As unemployment drops, more people move into urban areas. That's more people on the roads. Uh, those individuals are increasing congestion. The second big factor is fuel prices. As fuel prices drop, people are more willing to drive. People are less incentivized to take alternative forms of transportation. And that also increases the amount of gridlock. So it sounds like there's a good and bad in the sense that more traffic means a, a better, a healthier local economy? It is. It's a high-class problem to have. Cities want to have increased employment. They also want lower fuel prices. That helps the economy. But the penalty of having that is increased traffic. And existing roads today, most cities aren't building more. So finding ways to get more throughput and more efficient use of the roads is really what the focus should be on. Sure. So what can people then do to avoid getting stuck in traffic? Well, in the short term, being able to use a traffic app, like the Interix traffic app, to better plan their journeys. Even if it's a commute they take every day, be able to be notified of unexpected events like construction or accidents and be able to plan around that to get accurate ETA times. That's one thing individuals can do today. Outside of that, continue to look at alternative modes of transportation, cycling, light rail, bus. Those things all help to decrease traffic levels. Uh, now you mentioned, you know, um, other means of transportation. What can the local Department of Transportation then do to reduce traffic congestion in cities? Well, it all starts with measurement, and that's really the whole point of our scorecard, is to put those numbers out there so we can benchmark, we can see how bad the problem is, and put a number to it. What you measure, what you improve. And local DOTs are starting to do that. They're looking at quantifying and qualifying the, the investment for things like light rail or cycling corridors or variable tolling. We're starting to see some of those things take effect, but really those two GDP or those two factors we talked about earlier, GDP growth, lower fuel prices, that's overriding everything today. Now you mentioned you know, your app. How can mobile apps, you know, I guess connected cars, new technology, um, help solve or help alleviate this problem? In the short term, it's all about giving commuters better information to make their decisions. In the long term, as we start to see autonomous vehicles, car sharing, that's what's really going to change the equation for traffic. Autonomous vehicles don't require two seconds of separation between the vehicle in front of them. We'll be able to get more of them on the roads. We get more people into autonomous vehicles because there's not a driver. Uh, individuals can work, they can sleep, whatever they like to do. That's also going to change the equation. In the long run, shared vehicles, autonomous vehicles, that's what's going to change the equation fundamentally. Now, if you would want to get more information about the report and about those suggestions that you talked about, um, where can they go? Go to interix.com and you can find all of the information about our scorecard. You can look up the most congested traffic corridors. You can look at your commute, the road you take, understand how bad it is, and you also can find out more, more information about our app. Fantastic. Well, it's a fascinating topic because it's something that affects everyone. Thanks so much for coming in today, uh, Chris, and telling us more about it. My pleasure. Have a good day.